Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are taking a look at some synthesis flashback league starter options. A couple of different options for maybe some suggestions for you to start your synthesis flashback league with. Today we'll be taking a look at three different classes. We'll be looking at uh, two different options of each class in two separate videos. I just figured that it was just too much to cover in one elongated video and so we broke it up in to two different discussions. First off, today we'll be taking a look at some options for the Marauder, the Ranger, and the Shadow. And then in an upcoming video that'll be linked uh, will also be some options for the Templar, the Witch, and uh, with uh, some maybe some honorable mentions from the Scion as well as for the Duelist. So today we're focusing on Marauder, Ranger, and Shadow. You know the drill here on YouTube. There are timestamps placed directly above my slightly balding forehead. And of course, if you enjoy the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for more content just like this one. So first off, our disclaimer is that we're not going to be going into all of the min-max potential for each of these builds, okay? We're here in this discussion just to highlight a few choice community builds that uh, are starter friendly, which means that they are uh, potentially low budget or low cost for you to begin with as you progress through the 10X story and begin to fill out your atlas and clear out maps and build yourself a pool of currency. That doesn't mean that these builds aren't capable of pushing end game goals like end game bosses or even deep delving goals. It simply means that the cost and currency requirements and unique items that are required for these builds may be uh, a little bit on the cheaper end, which makes it a little bit easier to get into gameplay and get your flashback uh, mini league started faster and more efficiently. So first off, we're taking a look at uh, this Purifying Flame Chieftain that is built by Anokabur. Uh, it is an awesome, awesome build. I highly recommend that you check it out. And of course, all of these builds are going to be linked down below in the video description. So the thing that I wanted to really focus in here on an uh marauder purifying flame chieftain build is this first off in a flashback league if you are playing for racing purposes or you just want to you know add some uh more adrenaline to your gameplay and so you want to get added into some more random drawings playing on ascendancies that are less popular than others is very very helpful and gives you a greater chance of winning a random drawing so playing something like a chieftain is a great option for you if you're hoping to win a random drawing. Now, on this particular build, this is very, very tanky, and here's the reason why he goes with Purifying Flames. I'm just going to quote directly from an oak bar. He says, I'm generally a melee player, but figured I had to try some spell slinging in a spell-focused league. I chose Purifying Flames because the visual effect looked great, the base damage was extremely high, and I saw a ripe opportunity to abuse Conversion and Fizz to fire, double dipping akin to other fizz to LE skill, skills like Glacial Cascade. A Glacial Cascade with nearly three times the damage range, so don't have to worry about overlaps, tectonic slam levels of AoE, and free consecrated ground, sign me up. That is a wonderful sales pitch for the Purifying Flame Chieftain. And yes, his numbers are legitimate. If you see the numbers in his uh, title of his post, 5 million DPS plus 7.5k life, that is all legitimate. He's got a POB that's attached as well as some wonderful graphics that show you precisely the gear that you are looking for. It's a relatively cheap build. It's going to be on the higher end for min-maxing, but you can get started with it early on, and Purifying Flame as a skill will carry you very, very far playing as a Chieftain. Our second Marauder build that we're taking a look at is a little bit more of a solo self-found meme build. Uh, some of you may be looking at this and just saying, like, Dominating Blow, really? Like, really, Iron, why are you showing this off? Because it's a really fun-looking build, uh, and it's got some solid numbers behind it. So... A, a simple introduction from Jadol. A simple and straightforward build that can achieve a good balance between offense and defense with very few requirements. Ideal for casual players and SSF. I've had a bunch of people come up to me over the last couple of weeks uh, and say, Iron, we really like your build guides. We really like your videos here at G3, but can you do some more stuff that's maybe SSF friendly and maybe some more stuff that's casual friendly uh, in terms of showing off different builds? This is for you guys. Those of you that have made those comments, those of you that have PM'd me on Discord, that have sent me emails, that have dropped comments on YouTube, this build is, is like right up your alley. It might not be right up your alley because you choose not to like it or because it simply doesn't, you know, tickle your fancy as it were, but this 
this build is uh, right up your alley if you're looking for something that's casual friendly, that's SSF friendly, that doesn't have a ton of uniques behind it, and that's not going to be incredibly expensive in a trade league. So a couple of the pros to it. It's very, very easy to gear because there's almost no required in slot options. There's simply, uh, there's great uniques that you can upgrade to, but there's nothing required in slot to make it work. Very, very tanky. It's got good damage on bosses, which is something that early on you want to be clearing your maps uh, and always make sure that you're taking out bosses when you start a fresh league. So that's an advantage. It can farm the Uber Lab. So those of you that want to make money farming Uber Lab or simply are looking for specific helm enchants to either use yourself for other builds later on in the Flashback League or sell if you're not SSF, then those are options for you. It also can do all map mods. So early on in a league start, what a lot of players make a mistake doing when they see a, a a build is they look at it and they go, oh, well, that doesn't look fun, or oh, why is it that that's necessarily budget? There's a lot of chaos and a lot of cost that goes into re-rolling maps or selling maps and time that it takes to sell maps that your character can't run in the very beginning of a league. Think about it this way, just really quickly. If you drop a map and you roll something on it that you cannot use, you are then either going to take time later on down the line to sell that map, which means that the map does nothing for you in the instant that you have it, you're waiting for it to sell, or you're using currency again on that map to re-roll it and reuse it. Now, early on in a league or even mid-league, you might say, okay, well, it's easy to use some currency because I've already got some currency built up. But if it's literally your league start character that you're clearing your atlas with, you don't necessarily have a massive budget to spend on. And not everybody gets lucky and drops a tabula rasa or an exalted on the first weekend. A lot of players are still struggling for alterations, for alks, for chaos during that very first week getting started. So if that describes you, this would be a build to go check out. Transitioning over to the Ranger class, we've got two different awesome Ranger builds here. I wanted to give um, some options for those of you that are maybe more speedy boys, quote unquote. So this is the Volspark Pathfinder. For those of you that love mashing your flasks, of course, Pathfinder is always going to be the way to go. This is a build from Ira D38. Uh, and very simply, it is a Volspark Pathfinder. Those of you that are speedy boys, you already know, like all of those things are the things that you would want for a quick uh, character to both clear maps as well as boss early on, early on in the Atlas. This isn't going to take you all the way to Shaper necessarily. This isn't going to go and cl clear Uber Elder. But what this is going to do is allow you to build up a map pool and continually run through that map pool in order to build up your currency base in order to go run another type of character or to transition your Volspark Pathfinder into another character that can use some more uh, expensive gear. So the pros, it's very, very, very fast. It's not that expensive to get started. You can actually play this as a magic find character. It's got insane clear. Did we mention it's very, very fast? And of course, it's got that wonderful, beautiful shatter effect and shatter sound, which is always very, very satisfying. Okay, so that's the pros. The cons are that it can't do alley reflect maps. It can't do end game content like Shaper or Uber, Uber Elder. And it's hard to get back into if you run out of charges. Once you run out of charges on a Pathfinder, Either that's for your um, for your Vol Sparks or for your flasks. That can be annoying if you've accidentally smashed your flasks too much, which, of course, we've got a video about how to uh, manage your flasks a little bit better and not panic smash them so much. But if you're going to have bad tendencies on smashing your flasks too often, Pathfinder is probably the one ascendancy to go on because it's so forgiving and the extended duration of your flasks is so effective um, for its scaling. It's like, eh, you know what? If you if you panic flash your your uh, your flasks too much, if you panic smash your flask too much, maybe you need to learn to get better with it, or maybe you should just go and play a Pathfinder because they're gonna love you smashing your flasks anyway. All right, so that's your magic find option for your league starter. If you want to go with something that uh, has got some great scalability, in other words, you can start it out as a league starter and then dump currency into it as the flashback league uh, ages, then this is going to be your choice option. Our second ranger option is the Fire Elemental Hit Deadeye. It's got a budget version and then an end game version. This is from 99 Pro Sork. So I just wanted to highlight this really quickly, the detail that he goes into. So early on, when you are cheap and league starting, you can simply get a Chin Soul plus a Frost Frostferno. You can do a four link or a five link and then eventually dump more currency into it until you get the six link. You can use a plus two or plus three bow for your AOE setup in your other weapon set. Okay, so it's got a bossing option as well as a clearing option. Then as you scale up and accumulate more currency, you can simply go uh, and use the Chinsoul plus a Starkonia if you don't have the Frost Frostferno yet. Third setup is the recommended setup. That's a plus three bow plus Starkonias with a plus three Imperial bow or just plus three. 
crit and crafted attack speed. It's six link elemental hit in bow versus bosses, five link or six link elemental hit in chest for AoE or swap gems versus bosses. If you swap gems, you always benefit from the plus three bow skills. So that's pretty nice. And then fourth, the highest DPS at close range is using a Chin Soul plus Corrupted plus two Frostferno. So that would be like an end of the league. Hey, as you're building incursion temples or as you're building up currency to go and buy for. So I really enjoy that he's given us um, such a great breakdown on how you can scale this build with uh, currency as you progress through the Synthesis Flashback League. Hey, here's how you start. Here's how you progress. Here's some options for you as you go. Really enjoy that for the Fire Elemental Hit Deadeye. And those folks out there that are not using Elemental Hit or you've never used Elemental Hit, Elemental Hit is still in a great spot. The fact that it's got Threshold Jewels that you get fairly early on as you're progressing through the story is great. It means that you can level with your character relatively consistently while also getting into maps consistently. And there's a lot of the time um, this kind of philosophy of, oh, I'm going to level one thing, and then eventually once I get all of my required and slot gear, I can swap over to my real build, my endgame build. I really, really enjoy starter builds and recommending starter builds like this that you can start off relatively early leveling through the story mode with your end game skill so that way you get a feel for it and you get to see relatively early on whether or not you're going to enjoy that skill and enjoy that style of gameplay moving on to the shadow we've got a blight cast while channeling soul rend trickster this is ssf friendly and it can go take down the uber elder okay so i just wanted to throw this out there those of you that are going okay well where's our boss killers those of you that want to make a bunch of money uh by rushing uber elder this is one of the ways that you can do this so Seeker has really quickly given us some pros and cons. It's very budget friendly and it's solo self found viable. It's got great survivability thanks to mind over matter, acrobatics, phase acrobatics, and then of course being a trickster. It's good clear speed and single target damage. It can run all map mods. And then of course it can take down Uber Elder and other end game bosses as well. And it can be used as a magic find character if you want to swap over some magic find gear. So. The way that this build in particular works is it revolves around the combination of damage over time skills like Blight as well as Soul Rend to achieve a combination of close range single target damage and long range map clear. We combine the two gems with the help of the support gem cast while channeling to automatically cast Soul Rend as we are channeling our Blight. We support this with the Trickster Ascendancy that allows us to get a lot of bonus damage over time charge generation as well as synergy with mind over matter to bolster our defense is there any more straightforward like ssf boss killing map clearing atlas clearing build than this i mean i know a lot of people out there are instantly going to look at this and go oh iron this is a build that uses bite bite is a terrible skill well guess what everything chaos related is meta right now it just is. The tree is built for meta. Ascendancies right now, like Trickster, get a lot of additional damage over time effects. And there's tons and tons of items right now that have just gotten buffed for damage over time effects in combination with the passive tree. So if you are looking to get your fix in, this is going to be a great damage over time build. If, however, you're looking at it, you're going, ah, eh, this sounds like it's too meta for me. Okay, that's fine. We've got some other off-meta options as well that we've already talked about in the, in the video. But if you're looking at something and saying, you know what, maybe I haven't gotten a chance to try a Trickster yet, or maybe I haven't done any Chaos Damage over time yet during Synthesis League, this would be an exceptional build for you to try as a League starter. Moving on to our final shadow build, the Warbster Trickster CI Cheap Fast Starter Endgame Delver Tanky 2 Plus Mill DPS from Silver WF. Okay, so I had to include at least one Winter Orb build in this list because Winter Orb is still a, an exceptional skill. A lot of players are using it both to clear their Atlas as well as uh, progress into Endgame goals with it it's wonderful because it's so scalable with your currency which means you can start out with it and then as you're able to purchase upgrades you can min max which is by far i think the most efficient use of time for a league starter you can have a league starter that says okay i'm just going to use this league starter to then go and accumulate currency and then i'll go play my real build that i want to play over here in my mind, for a shortened league, for a flashback league like this, where we're only playing from May 10th until June 4th, that's less than a month long. Um, it, it's just really, really condensed. So in such a condensed time period, 
to me at least, for a league starter, it's helpful to have the option to scale it with your currency as opposed to splitting your time leveling one character and then leveling another character all over again. So here are the pros and the cons. Insane clear speed, natural trickster movement speed, shield charge plus flasks, and clear quality. Winter orb would break monsters and destructibles at the entire screen. It's cheap, yes, for just 2x to get started, till Guardians and 10x for more or less Uber Elder viable items. Yes, this is not a joke. Yes, it's got very good survivability, 9k plus energy shield, 7k without discipline, 40% chance to evade chance, 30% chance to block, 1.5k seconds, uh, 1.5k energy shield leached per second. It's safe and simple bossing, chaos damage completely immune, duh, because it's CI. Which means if you want to be running a bunch of temples, it means if you want to be interacting with a bunch of betrayal content, it means if you want to be delving deep and going into a bunch of vault spaces where there are different uh, chaos damage modifiers, you can do all of that. You don't have to worry about it. Alley Reflect is possible if you get prepared for it, but if not, you've got to wor watch out for that. So just be aware of that. Don't play a Winter Orb build and say, oh, Iron, you didn't warn me about Alley Reflect. Well, you're doing all elemental damage. Just be aware of that. So some cons. If you dislike Winter Orb or Trickster or Spells, then that's a con. If you want to make endgame bosses cry and call their moms. If you are RMT and want to show to everyone how rich you are. And it requires getting some strength and dex from gear. So that's actually helpful to know. You will have to get some strength and dex on your gear. But other than that, this is a very, very viable build, even for SSF characters, uh, if you'd like to start off this way. There are some, of course, best in slot uh, uniques, as well as some best in slot uh, mods that you're going to be looking for on rare items, but this is another example of a build that you can scale up with your currency as the league goes on, and you can start out with it and know that it's going to take you through maps at some level of consistency, regardless of what drops for you, whether you're lucky or unlucky in terms of your drops. Well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I've got three discussion questions for us today. First off, what build looks like fun as a starter for you? Is there a particular build maybe that we highlighted in the video? Or is there another particular starter that you think out of the Marauder, out of the Ranger, or out of the Shadow that looks like a fun starter for you? Leave us a comment down below with that. Second question, what league starter did you use in Synthesis? Leave us a note down below about what you used to start Synthesis and whether or not you were happy with it. I was very unhappy with my betrayal starters and I swapped over a bunch of my betrayal starters uh, that started out with I was pretty happy with my uh, spark inquisitor starter for hardcore synthesis uh, and uh, relatively pleased yeah I would say I would say happy with my righteous fire uh, righteous fire juggernaut that I finished up uh, the main synthesis league with as I'm now looking to uh, get started in the flashback league when that drops and then last question today why will you swap starters or are you going to stick with your synthesis starter so if you saw any builds here today that are interesting to you that you're gonna swap to or you've seen other builds that have been mentioned why is it that you will swap was there something that was deficient about your starter in synthesis was there for some reason that you just didn't like it was there something that caught your eye that said oh you know what this was what a guild mate was using or this is what a streamer or another player was using and i saw it and that really looks cool so let us know down in the comments why will you swap starters or why is it that you will stick with your synthesis starter stay tuned as always for more poe content and later on this week we will have our next video highlighting the witch the templar the duelist as well as some honorable mentions from the scion as we are all getting ready and getting hype for the synthesis flashback league i hope today is the day that a mirror of calandra drops for you right after you get done watching this video Nice patrons, yes, good patrons. They're so kind and supportive. I can't believe you watched that thing. That was a good job. You did it. You got through the whole uh, video. Yay.